Hunter x Hunter episode 97, Carnage X and X Devastation. Tell me we're this lucky that we get two... <laughs> Two Phantom Troop episodes back to back. Wow, what a, what a mistake. What an unfor unfortunate mistake. Making a home in the Phantom Troop's home city. No, it's alright. You, you can obliterate them. It's fine. Sunny as ever. I'll never see this man the same again. This is sort of par for the course, <laughs> for this old family. So fast. Yeah, no experience, no perspective. Nice. You forget, or I forgot, they're all physical beasts on top of their amazing net ability. I mean, vacuum seems like a perfect counter for, like, cobwebs. <laughs> for real, though, vacuum cleaner or spider web has got to be the best rock, scissors, paper matchup conceivable. <laughs> if I never have to see this spider ant's butthole again, it'll be too soon. And there it is again. Cool. You sure? Use your one thing, the vacuum cleaner, in your hand. Turn on the... Okay, just wait for it. <laughs> wait for it. I'm guessing it has something to do with a vacuum cleaner. Or she just got naked. Strategy and fan service. She can get it back. <laughs> Thank God she didn't mention his anus. <laughs> Man, she's using her vacuum cleaner for everything except vacuuming. There we go. No, 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 that is absurd no, no, no. and amazing that it's that strong. She really cleans up. This is a metaphor. <laughs> I think a lot of fans are losing blood. Very precise. How many of these puns are intentional? <laughs> how, how deliberate was his writing? I don't know whether to be amazed and impressed or disgusted. There's one hole that this guy never bothers to cover. If these are all puns, hats off to both the writers and the translators. She really cleans up. <laughs> I like her a lot better now, too. Can't really put my finger on why, though. That's a good point. Yeah, you really should consider that. Yeah, I mean, we've established. We've established the power. This is one of them. He's gonna beat the queen alone. Aha, uh -huh, interesting. Okay. Welcome to the group. He may have joined the club for whatever reason. He might be a convert. You're in the right place, probably. Here I was thinking that the Zoldic family was the, the one that was par for the course. Total confidence. It's like uh, Uvo Gain all over again. Despite all the coverage of the Zoldic family, I feel like there's still so much more I want to know. It's been implied very heavily that Kalua was trained by his brother, but it's possible there are a lot of different mini factions within the family. Kalua seems to have been very close to mom. Ooh, that didn't look good. For you. Not so brazen now. Hidden bullet in the hidden blade. 
It's over. Total, totally over. Lost control. Done. What? I don't know if that was the move. It was certainly a thing that you did. Oh, okay. Oh, this is parallels all over the place. This is Bisky. <laughs> now finally, her outside matches her inside. We didn't see it? Whole crew getting naked today. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm gonna read this as just total confidence in Phaeton. This is how they function. On the plus side, you're in the right place. You're in exactly the right place. I mean, long term, wouldn't you rather be in a position where you're behind the strongest possible slipstream, ensuring your fastest maximum possible development? Or would you rather be at the top being exactly what you were perpetually and then from then on just sort of existing? If it's not your ultimate goal and the position itself is not being enjoyed in the present progressive, then the former is probably better. And the knowing is always good, even if it stings at first. There you go. Retrieving my brother, interesting. Oh, this is this is it. This is the real one. Swinging to Uvogin. Nice of them to give a warning. Why does the queen look like Rocksteady from Ninja Turtles? Oh, it changes the physical appearance, too. It's interesting, look. Is it like Bide in Pokemon? Giving out some of the damage you've received? Burnt by the sun. Wow. Speaking of Supernova. <laughs> that, that valiant last minute escape with Kaluto. Is this a new new musical track just for this attack? And there, there's like poetry associated with it. I wonder if it's deliberate that the the anger form releases itself as sort of a glee. Anger is one of those toxic emotions that actually feels great and it's kind of joyful in the moment. If he's not careful, he might do some damage to the beautiful aesthetic of Garbage City. Alright, yeah, it, is, it does seem proportionate. It's your fault. I burnt you with the power of the sun. Now I, fi I finally understand the purpose of these characters. The Phantom Troop have given them meaning. All, all these little weird henchmen that are just not impressive compared to the Royal Guard and the King. Why we had to suffer through their terrible personalities. All their childishness, all their caricature-ness. It was for this, it was for this glorious moment of the Phantom Troop and probably more to follow with other characters like Knuckle, maybe Gon Klua, etc. In death, their lives have been given meaning. That meaning was giving me pleasure watching them die and being a vehicle to somehow make the Phantom Troop even cooler, more lovable and appealing than ever before. And this is what I was saying in the beginning of this arc, where I'm like, well, these ants will just be a vehicle for just really cool, gleeful destruction of creatures that we don't care about. This was it. It just didn't come from going to Kahlua like I thought. Overall, just incredibly satisfying. Oh, dark memories of Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> wow. Okay, that feels like a coping mechanism. This is unpleasant for him. Yeah. 
this less fun. It's still your home. <laughs> As expected, garbage city, the safest place on earth. The first victory for humanity. Not in our dumpster. Oh, oh yeah, that. Damn, they're going commando. It, it, multiple meanings. And yet, despite all the danger, I feel optimistic having watched those glorious two episodes of The Phantom Troop. Last episode, I was musing that maybe the terrible conditions of Meteor City would create a very strong solidarity between people living there against outsiders or against any kind of threat. I haven't really noticed any indication up to this point that that's true for the city as a whole, but it does certainly seem true for The Phantom Troop. I mean, they are very competitive. They are, on some level, prepared and used to each other's deaths. There is a sort of combativeness between them, but I think at the heart of it, it's palpable that they all really care about each other. There is an intense amount of loyalty and although we haven't really seen that much of their backstory, I imagine that those were diamonds formed by intense pressure, and it's a pressure they all experience and understand. The concept of me against the world, or in this case, us against the world, is perhaps not the ideal framework for life, but I absolutely feel the positives, the bonds that it can create. What I'm about to say is not at all equivalent, it's not even a negative thing. It's just one thing I thought about, is there's a certain bond between me and my younger sister that is unique and cannot possibly be replicated by anyone else in our lives, just because we know that only we know the specifics of our childhood and what we grew up in. Again, not even implying or saying that there's anything negative about our childhoods. Just the fact that we only know and we both know only we know immediately is a form of glue. And that's just a tiny example. As I said, I already loved the Phantom Troop before these two episodes. This was such a great continuation of their development. I think in this little mini arc, they continued to shine as a group, but I think they also were allowed to shine a little bit more as individuals and a lot of their characteristics came out. We saw a couple of them get highlighted very well, much to my delight, as always. Their Nen powers largely seem to have very distinct parallels for their characters. Shalnar solidifying himself as my favorite, but all of them being great in their way. And again, it's funny that in this whole Chimera arc so far, the Phantom Troop being the, the best, most convincing at showing up and doing their part, even if it's just in one place for a couple of the ends. I think me especially, I'm, I'm very heavily swayed by this kind of thing. It's a tempting philosophy for me that's hard for me to shake, even though there's something in my mind that tells me objectively it's not complete. I really like philosophically some of the broader, grander themes and messages in the shows I've watched, you know, Thorfinn's I Have No Enemies, the way Attack on Titan challenges, you know, which lives have value, how despite the ease of creating this us versus them mentality and all the various methods of justifying destruction or, you know, one's own protection and the protection of those we love, there is something really deeply compelling to me about like, this is my in-circle, that's my out-circle. I do everything for my in-circle, I could care less about that that's outside and unknown. What has the world done for me lately compared to my home who have done everything for me. Maybe the answer is that they're not necessarily mutually exclusive, that you can give most abundantly to those that you love and respect and have camaraderie and solidarity with, and also keep track of yourself, develop your, your objective mental framework so that you have very, very clear ethical lines and you're you're not becoming someone else's evil, you know, someone else's villain. You're not destroying another group just like yours that has the same values and same love, etc., just by diminishing them into non-human entities or something like that. But I think that's what makes the Phantom Troop lovable despite their villain status, the fact that they kill so readily. They're not devoid of real beauty within them. And towards that end of wanting things to be good and having higher morals, etc., there's a hope in me that throughout the series, they end up in a place where they can do both. That is something I think would be really thrilling to see happen in the show, whether or not that exists in the animated episodes. Mm -hmm.